Welcome to a lightning tour of the Azure portal. This is going to be a very fast and quick tutorial, uh, kind of review of the Azure portal. It's kind of a new leaf for me. I'm trying to get things shorter so you guys can get done and I'll do it in shorter segments because I think it's hard to get a big chunk of people's time. And uh, the subtitle of this is resources are just a click away. My name is Brian Kafke and let's uh, jump right in. First thing you'll notice is I default by I'm starting in my dashboard. Now one of the things I want to step back and appreciate is Microsoft has got a rich experience developing really engaging and useful GUIs. They've done it with all their products for decades now. And I think it's truly a great advantage in the Azure portal versus other portals and for cloud services because uh, they did a really great job. They thought it out and they have, let's face it, the, the kind of experience and background to do it really well. And I really appreciate it now because of all the things that I've, as working at Microsoft, I've seen people you know, want this and want that. I've never heard anyone really complain about the portal GUI. It's, it's just a great portal. It's really easy to use and it's rich in functionality. Even as I was preparing to kind of do this demo, I'm like, wow, I didn't know you could do that. Wow, you know, I'm learning new things. I'll go into a demo and I'll see something Microsoft's doing, you know, something like, uh, could be the, we'll say the uh, order, operations management suite, for example, and they have these visual dashboards and all this stuff. And I just look at like, wow, I don't even know what it's doing, but it looks really cool. And that's kind of unique to Microsoft because I've seen demos done by other companies. And a lot of times you're at a command prompt and it may be very powerful, but to be honest, it's not very good to look at. And that's why I decide, hey, let's talk about the portal for a minute. Also, if you've been trying to ramp up into Azure, the portal's where you need to begin and you're gonna keep going back to it a lot to check on things, to look at monitors. There's lots of built-in dashboards and tools within uh, Azure to monitor resources, see what's going on and check on things. I'm gonna just kind of start right to left, but I'll get into the functionality quickly, but I do wanna say, okay, first you can see, you know, your accounts up here, and then you can see, you know, some information about that, and you can go in and say, switch, basically subscription says directory, and you can view your account information. Nothing too exciting here. Here, if I wanna give feedback to Microsoft, I can do that. Um, we've got a help system. I didn't even knew, realize this, but if you want the Azure roadmap, people always ask me, so what's the roadmap? What can we expect down the road? Click here. It'll actually give you the most recent month update. So September now, if I click on it, it brings me right over to what's going on. So this is the September, pretty much everything going on in Azure. And you can see this is what's available. This is what's in preview, that's in development. So right in the portal, you can find out where things are going. Uh, you also have guided tours and all kinds of stuff in here. Microsoft sprinkles throughout its GUI, links to utilities, tutorials, videos, help, everything. So. Try to take advantage of that. It's not necessarily everywhere you would see that, but it's a way of making it as easy as possible for you to get started. And that's really what the whole portal's design seems to be, making this as easy as possible. All right, here's our settings. So we can go in here and, you know, take the default and we can say, you know, I like that dark interface. It's very popular with developers, you know, bright colors with dark background, or we can say white, or I can just go back to the default and I'll cancel this, but I can keep whatever I you know want for my settings. To cancel that we're back to our normal I like the defaults but you can change it to what you want uh, you have filters here so I can again change subscription is really what that does and I'm going to show you something pretty cool here you may not have realized but people like to sometimes work in the command line so if I click on this I actually have the CLI built in now so if you're a Linux person and you like working in bash you can just do your typical LS your usual stuff and the point of Putting the shell in is that you can actually go in and work in the command line like you would if you were on premise and go into your Linux servers and things. Now, I'm not really as big a Linux person. I like PowerShell, so I'm going to switch over to PowerShell, confirm. And now I've got all the things I'm used to using a PowerShell. So whether you're, and by the way, PowerShell runs on Linux. It's, it's fully functional and great on Linux as well. So whichever one you like better, go with it. They're both powerful. They're both great ways of working and creating resources, etc. And so now I'm in uh, you know, Azure here and I can say things like, I can use the providers, for instance, I can say, gee, I wanna see directory of my aliases, for example. And directory is actually, an alias itself is DIR. So you can see I can do things in here and I can restart the shell. I can, uh, I can do some, it's hard to see maybe some of this. Let me see if I can. Yeah, okay, so you can see a little bit better. Uh, so. I can restart the shell, I can get help, cloud shell overview, all these things here. I can set text sizes and fonts here, so that's another way I can adjust things. Um, I can 
upload and download files. So I don't tend to use the shell as much. I usually either do programming, I use the uh, automation account service, which I did a whole presentation, a series on that. Uh, but if you want to do stuff here, you can, and you can upload files, scripts, etc. And then you can also get a little editor here, and you can do your own editing. And so I closed out of that, but that's a shell. You can work in PowerShell, etc. And uh, actually, it's not bad. It's a little bit bigger thing here. You can see better on the screen. And so we've done that. We've done the shell. The other thing I can do is I can search things. So I created a lot of different things, and some are terminated, so I'm not paying for them. Other things um, are not. So I tend to prefix everything with BPC. So I could say BPC, and you can see it finds things that have BPC in them, and then I can go and try to figure out what I want, and it's telling me what they are here. And I could also do, or I could hit enter, and then it will give me more of a, a listing that I can search through. So it depends how I want to do this. This I use all the time because I get rid of that. don't want my cluster getting billed for something I'm not using anymore. And this is a great way to go into it. But that's, uh, that's how we can search for things. Sometimes people wonder, like, Bing search and uh, and how that's integrated into our products and I believe this is a case for this where you're searching for things and Bing search is actually used in many places in Microsoft products and it's available as a cognitive service service as well you can do things with it and integrate it into other things that's where it really comes in handy all right so let's uh step away from here for a minute but if I want to go into any one of these all I have to do is click on it I was playing with analysis services my prior video and you can see all kinds of stuff here so let me talk about the blade. So this, when I click on something, this is called a blade, and then this is actually a subblade. So I say I want to look at my activity log, and of course I'm navigating here, and then things pop up to the right. And this can nest itself. It can go any number of levels deep if I'm creating a new resource. It just keeps adding, and these are ways of prompting you through what you need to create. I actually like it a lot because I'm able to sort of fill out one piece, and then it creates the sub deals. Okay, now tell me other details about what you want. And eventually it says, okay, I'm good. I know what I need to know. I'll create your resource. Um, so you get a lot of things you can do, clicking on things here, get pop-up GUIs as needed. Uh, you can, very often you'll see these little menus on the right, little dot, 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 ellipsis. And you can click on those, and they'll give you sub-menus, and you can do con context things related to that. I think those dot, dot, dots remind me a lot of the right mouse clicking in Windows. You don't typically get that within the web browser applications. So these little dot, dot, dots tend to be the right mouse clicking, what's contextually available at this point in time. Uh, here you can see arrows, which allow us to upload and download things. So a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff there. And that's basically just sort of the whole idea of Blade. So I want to make sure I cover that. When I'm done using something, I can X here and close the window. And anytime you'll notice these little, little, uh, Thumb, pin cushion pins here. And that's basically, it tells you right here, you always get these highlight things, hover over highlights. So if you're not sure what something is, just hover over it, it usually will give you a description. But it says, pin this blade to the dashboard. And I can do this in many places. Typically I can do it at specific assets. And so I can pin things to the dashboard. I, I almost always do that when I create something new so I can go back to it now and the dashboard easily. And also to remind myself later, I can get rid of it. The dashboard's completely flexible. And I'm gonna talk about that as well. Uh, but you can also, push things back and forth using these expanders. And notice, uh, let me close this out for a minute because I want to talk to this as well. And I'm going to just X these things out. And I'm back at my dashboard. But I can also, this navigator, by default, will give me you know, descriptive values things. This is my dashboard, my virtual machines, etc. But I can compress that just by doing that. And now I just get icons. But if I get confused, and I do often, uh, I can just toggle it back. Of course, I don't have to do that because I can also just do this and as I hover over it will give me more information. I like that because it maximizes the available screen real estate. When you're creating things in Azure there's a lot of blades you sometimes have to go through or in this case like I'm looking at my dashboard and I'd rather not allocate too much to the side panel list, the icons that navigate me around but I still need them. So this is a great way to kind of give them that, my access to things but then I can just click and get to what I want. And you can see the dashboard uh, begins, and I'll kind of go through some uh, some other details about that. Uh, so let's talk a little about the dashboard, and then I'm gonna get right into you know how to navigate to create new resources. So we can see actually, first thing about a dashboard is, we have a default, but I have a second dashboard. And you notice I have a third dashboard, and I have even one that I used, it's cloning, I just wanted to play with that. And I can say, browse all of them. So it's pretty cool, you can actually create different definitions. So maybe you want a dashboard that focuses on your databases, then you want another dashboard that's focusing on resource usage, you know, what's my bill gonna look like? You can 
basically create custom dashboards however you want and you can customize them and uh, all that stuff but I'm gonna go back to my primary dashboard and that's this one and you see the little pencil so I can go in here and say I'm gonna now play around I can add things and change things and say done customizing can we rename it so very cool uh, I can this I have not tried this feature I'm not sure how exactly it works but apparently I can upload and download dashboards maybe share them with my friends and there is a share function in here as well uh, so here's my share so I can say I want to share this with other people I can go full screen with this so you get that kind of full screen experience um, I can clone and you saw an example because I actually did clone one and I can just say I want to delete a dashboard the one I'm on so you can see this dashboard experience is really useful I use this primary one a lot as you know I do a lot of things with like Databricks and things so there's a lot of different demos in here and uh, let's go through deleting because I'm actually on the dashboard I created this earlier when I was preparing for this and then realized I don't want to keep this so when we create something we can uh, create what's called a resource group and I think of it like a big box and I'm gonna throw things that I'm creating in that box and you think of it like and then you go to the storefront and you say okay or shopping cart if you want now I'm gonna buy these things but it never leaves that resource group that resource group is a container for everything and the beauty of it is when I want to get rid of it I can just delete the resource group and know that everything related to it is gone so that's that's really nice because you go in something like Databricks or and that creates a lot of things under the covers or maybe you create something managed instance which also creates a lot of things under the covers the resource group is the one place you can say I want everything gone and it done like Picard make it so and it's gone if you try to do it piecemeal you could miss pieces like oh yeah I forgot about the VNet or yeah I forgot about blob storage this way you can get rid of everything all right so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna delete this resource group so I'm just gonna click on it and those links are typically active and if you can I can add things and things but instead I'm going to say delete the resource group now I'm gonna do a swipe here because it tries to warn you resource groups obviously you could do some damage getting rid of resource groups you might have a lot of stuff so I have to tell it again yes by name I want you to get rid of this and uh, get rid of it and you can see here it says it's doing it and this little uh, thing here is this little bell gives me messages to what's going on so I can see this succeeded I can say pin this to my dashboard here it's saying delete when you pin things so all your activities show up under this bell thing it's a little, it's like basically an activity log telling you what's going on so that's all I'm gonna do for that let's uh, go back to my dashboard and let's talk about creating assets because let's face it that's what this is about we're going to the portal typically we're gonna begin by creating things easiest way to create an asset is to click on the plus sign now there's two two ways I kind of look at creating assets one is you can navigate by type so like I said I do a lot of things with database related things so if I want a SQL database I can go here and again links you know all over the place the tutorials use them here's a tip if you're trying to learn Azure the easiest way to do it actually is just get into the portal and play around uh, you can have free subscriptions for trials you can use uh, MSDN accounts as ways to get your access but the reason I say that is because when you want to know about something there's so many links and tutorials within Azure itself that you can just kind of go through explore and then delve into any topic you want and the portal kind of creates sort of a navigator for you to find topics of interest All right, <clears throat> so this is one way uh, but let's say and I often don't really like navigating trying to find things I'm like well where would you put a VNet I don't know so instead what I'll do is I'll look for something like Databricks hit enter and it tries to find things there it is and then I can say okay and again you get all this documentation and things like that to create and then I can give it a workspace name and I say my DB workspace and again resource group so I usually prefix resource groups with RG or your initials or something and then my RG and the reason I do that is because I like to be able to find them quickly in a production instance whatever your, your environment hopefully you have some standards for how you're naming things to make it easier to organize but if you're just playing around it's not a bad idea especially for resource groups to give them some way that you can easily find them that's my trick uh, then you tell it what region uh, and then you have your pricing here what, what is it you're looking to do and what pricing range do you want it to be in and if I look at automation options what I can get are templates so these are JSON files they're called arm templates and they're a way to create a definite keep a definition of the asset I've created and then I can run them and recreate the asset etc tweak them I, I use I don't use arm templates as much I'm an old PowerShell guy but you can use these as well and you can use them together you can have PowerShell uh, launched 
ARM templates to create things. So they're a great combination of things. All right, let me go back here. So that, I'm not going to create this. I hope pulls this out. Just kind of keep working backwards, get rid of things. And um, let me go back to my dashboard. All right, so now we've seen creating assets. We've seen this expanding. We've seen our dashboards. You can see this is still going. I cre there's a lot of stuff related when you create uh, Databricks under the covers. A lot of things automatically done for you, so it's cleaning all that up for me. Um, yeah. So here's an interesting thing. If you notice down here, I've got these icons. And these are actually, I picked what I want to show up here because there's too many different types of things you can create in Azure that it would be too long a list to manage if it didn't. So you see this little star. Well, you've got favorites in your browser, right? That's what this is. I can attach favorites to my browser and then I can go to things I want, but I can get rid of things I don't want. And the way I do that is I go to all services here and in here I can see all the different possible things in Azure. So yeah, Azure has a lot of different resources. Some of them are very storage based, some are network based, some are database orientated. And you'll notice that some are starred. So if we look to the left side, for instance, advisor, if I click that, you should notice something disappeared. Um, I can also say analysis services and you notice something may disappear. Uh, so that's what I can do basically, if you look to the left, it's kind of hard to see some of this because I got a lot of stuff. But if I were to go into all resources and just add this in, you can see it added something at the bottom here. So that's what the all resources does. When I star things, I can tell it what I want to include. Let's say take that off and different things like that. So you should see as I start unclicking things, it starts to manipulate that list. So the idea there is go to all resources and just star the things you want to be in that side portal menu and they'll be available to you. So if you're not really that interested in worrying about VNets or uh, storage areas or whatever, or if that is your area, then you can focus on that. And basically down the left side, we can go to those areas. And if I want to see all my SQL databases, I can click on it. And then I can just navigate in. I can check things to do actions. And when I check something here, this is sort of, again, my context menu. So I can say pin it to the dashboard or delete it. Um, I usually would rather go to a resource group if I'm trying to get rid of everything. But these are my databases within a SQL uh, server. And this actually is a managed instance. You can see multiple databases. I even have uh, SSAS, which is probably going to be another video coming up, how to put SSAS packages into Azure uh, Data Factory, but then be able to manage it and everything within a managed instance. Very cool stuff. Uh, so we're going to go like here. I can then go into my databases. And again, I work through the, the different blades and I can you know, look for things. I can add tags. I can look at my quick start. And that gives you quick starts are great places to get reference material and things, as I mentioned. A lot of good stuff there. Um, look for menus. There's all kinds of pop-up and, and useful menus here, so I can edit columns, for instance. A lot of times preview features are put in. Microsoft is cautious about preview features, so they want to make sure it's really ready before they go live and say it's production GA, but it's a great way to use things and learn about Azure. And the portal is as well, just exploring in the portal, look around, click around. That's a good way to learn things. Between that and PowerShell, if you play with both, you really get a good understanding of how Azure works and how to leverage it. Again, you can pin things. All right, so we've got things here. You can find things. And if you decide you want to get rid of something, you can you can delete it from the dashboard. Things like, I think that's the basics of the dashboard. I'm doing a little scan because there's a lot of different features in here that I want to make sure I've covered. But I think you've got the gist of it. Again, you've got your dashboard that manages things, and you create multiple and customize and tailor it. You've seen the Add button, which allows us to create new assets, and you can search or you can go by category. You've seen the ability to use the all services and then start things you want to appear down here as your menu options. And uh, you've also seen this part, your settings. And most importantly, of course, the cloud shell, which lets you work at a command prompt. So you nerds like me out there that like to work at a command prompt. Actually, I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to that. I like GUIs. But if you are one of those hardcore techies, go into your command shell, have at it. So that was the lightning tour of the Azure portal. Resources are just to click away, explore it. And the, the really key takeaways is play with it because there's a lot of features, you'll find new things. So that's my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Star, like, just try to keep these short. Let me know what you think, like, share, please, and uh, subscribe. And until next time, as the Klingons say, kapla.